Amen. Praise the Lord, everyone. Love that song that was playing, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Something happens when I call you. I know that my hardest of times and my hardest of trials, my hardest of tests, sometimes I don't feel like calling on anybody. I just feel like sometimes just sitting and looking and being all by myself. But you know that it's in those times if I can just push my way to say, Jesus, <laughs> glory be to God. I say it one time, start feeling a little bit better, so I say it a second time, Jesus. <laughs> I can feel something stirring and moving on the inside, and I say, Jesus, 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 oh yeah. And my breakthrough comes, hallelujah. And it's not long after that that I'm kicking the devil out. Hallelujah. I got my mind right. I'm ready to run on a little while longer. Something happens. Hallelujah. Something happens. Oh, when I call on that name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Give God some praise as we get ready to worship the Lord this morning. Glory be to God. Father, we thank you. Lord, we love you. Lord, we'll praise you. Lord, we'll lift you up. Lord, we'll magnify you. We are in your house. This is your house, Lord. This is your place. We are your people. We are your children. Be glorified in this house. Be glorified in this place. Father, we want to shake off everything that the weak has thrown on us. We want to shake off every burden. We want to shake off every hindrance. We want to shake off every tired feeling. We want to shake all every bit of darkness and we want to give you praise for you worthy almighty God you worthy you worthy you worthy you saved my soul you delivered us oh God you made us who we are you worthy oh God you worthy oh if it had not been for you where would we be oh Lord but God because of you oh God we're in our right mind because filled with the Holy Ghost Hallelujah. and the blood of Jesus covers our sins because of you Lord Hallelujah. and we thank you Lord Father Hallelujah. it's all because of you Hallelujah. because something happened on that great day when I called on your name Jesus. you saved my soul Hallelujah. thank you Lord Jesus Christ be with us as we go forward in worship in Jesus name in Jesus name in Jesus name Amen. Amen. Now we're going to have our men's choir. Praise the Lord. Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done for me. Jesus, I'll never forget how you said I never forget how you brought me out. I never forget, no, never. I never forget what you done for me. I never forget how you set me free. I never forget how you brought me out. I never forget, no, never. How can I forget? What you done for me? How can I forget how you set me free? And how can I forget how you brought me out? Jesus, I'll never forget, no, never. I won't forget how 
you rain me. I won't forget how you feel me. I won't forget get the Holy Ghost. I won't forget you did it. I won't forget you did it. I won't forget how you did it. I won't forget my I won't forget. I won't forget. I won't forget. You saved my soul. I won't forget. I won't forget. I won't forget. You made me whole. I won't forget. I won't forget. I won't forget. I'll never forget.
Thank you, Jesus. Glory be to God. Oh, I feel like shouting. I feel like praising him already. Hallelujah. It don't take long. It don't take long. It don't take long for God to come to his people, to bless them, to be with them, to commune with them. It don't take long. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It don't take long. Hallelujah. It don't take long for God to move. Hallelujah. It don't take long, saints. It don't take long. Hallelujah. For God to move. Thank you, Jesus. I had a God moment. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. His weight came on me just now. I had a God moment. It was his weight. Hallelujah. It was his weight. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. All right, Dr. Beckton. We ready now. Yes, Lord. God moved and had to do something, and I had to let him do it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glad I've got Jesus down in my heart. Glad I've got Jesus down in my heart. Yes, sir. Glad I've got Jesus in my heart. Jesus. I got Jesus. You see, if you got Jesus, I got Jesus. You got a mighty good doctor. I got Jesus. And if you got Jesus, I got Jesus. You got a mighty good friend. I got Jesus. And if you got Jesus, I got Jesus. You got a doctor in the sick room. I got Jesus. Can I ask you a question? I got Jesus. Can I ask you a question? I got Jesus. Has anybody got the Holy Ghost? I got Jesus. Has anybody got the Holy Ghost? I got Jesus. Has anybody got joy? I got Jesus. Oh, if you got joy, I got Jesus. I'm glad I've got Jesus down in my heart. Glad I've got Jesus down in my heart. Glad I've got Jesus down in my heart. Oh, you know I'm glad I got Jesus in my heart. I want you all to help us to sing that song, that chorus, because I believe we got something to be glad about. Oh, I got Jesus. I got Jesus. I got Jesus. I got Jesus. I said, I got Jesus. I got Jesus. Oh, I got Jesus. I got Jesus. I got Jesus in my heart. I got Jesus. I got Jesus in my soul. I got Jesus. I got Jesus in my mind. I got Jesus. I got Jesus in the morning. I got Jesus. I got Jesus in the evening. I got Jesus. I got Jesus late at night. I got Jesus. No one else can help me. I got 
Oh, I got Jesus. I got Jesus. When my body is sick, I got Jesus. I've got Jesus. I got Jesus. When I need a breakthrough, I got Jesus. When I need a breakthrough, I got Jesus. When I need a breakthrough, oh, I've got Jesus. Oh, I've got Jesus. I'll call him in the morning. I'll call him in the evening. I'll call him late at night. I'll call him right now. Oh, I've got Jesus. Oh, I've got Jesus. Glad I've got Jesus down in my heart. Glad I've got Jesus down in my heart. Yes, I am. You know I'm glad I've got Jesus. some praise in this house. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. At this time, we're going to prepare for our morning prayer. And I am going to ask Elder Wallace if he would be so kind. And I hope that he don't mind leading us, the men, in the brotherhood prayer for this month. If you would prepare yourself. Thank you, sir. We do give God some praise for, for his house. We thank God for every child of God that's here. And we ask that you would continue to uh, worship with us. Press your way into Jesus. Break through all of the stuff, all of the things that would hinder you, all of the things that would distract you. We want God to come here and to blow the top off this place this morning. Am I, amen. Amen. I agree with that. I touch and agree, God, blow the top off this place. Let no burden be taken back with us. Let no problem be unsolved. Let nobody be unhealed. Let no mountain be unmoved in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Holy we're glad we got Jesus, and Jesus can do some things. Oh, bless his holy and adorable name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. As we prepare ourselves to go before the throne of grace, uh, let us remember, praise the Lord, hallelujah, how good God is. And he's wonderful to all of us. And he is merciful and he is kind. If you can stand all over the building in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we, we come together as the Bible, the scripture teaches us, we can go boldly before the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy to help in time of need. We do have a high priest, and his name is Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, we love you today. We come in the name, Lord Jesus Christ. We bless you, O oh God. We thank you for this opportunity to come together as brothers and sisters. We pray, God, that you will bind our hearts and our minds and our spirits, knit them together as one. In the name, Lord Jesus Christ, break down every barrier, break down every stronghold, everything that is not like you. We glorify you, Lord. We magnify you. We deify. We lift up your name. For the heavens declare your glory and the firmament show thy handiworks. You are the creator of the heavens and the earth and all that be therein. And we just want to praise you, God. We just want to savor, oh God, in your presence. Because in your presence there is the fullness of joy. We bless you, my God. We worship you in spirit and in truth. We thank you, Lord, in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Now, God, we want you to have mercy on us. Please forgive us of our sins. We have fallen short of your will, your word, and we ask God for mercy today in the name of Jesus Christ. Deliver us, oh God. Set us free by the power of the Holy Ghost. And we pray, God, for souls that are not yet saved. Oh God, those that are still on the fence, that are trying to decide what to do. We pray, God, that you would quicken them by the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus Christ, save somebody to the uttermost. Hallelujah. 
deliver somebody, oh God, and we shall be delivered. Set somebody free, and they shall be set free, oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, God, we pray. We want you to bless our pastor today. We ask God that you bless him in his travels, oh God. Hallelujah, Lady Parson. Bless them and keep them safe in Jesus' name. Give them safe journeys and passage, oh God. Open up doors of opportunity for utterance, for that the gospel message of our Lord Jesus Christ will continue to go forth that souls may be saved in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. We pray, God, that you will bless the message that will come forth. Hallelujah from Elder Dasta today. I pray, God, as he preaches the word of God, that our minds will be stimulated and our spirits will be awakened. Oh, God, that you will take us to a new place. Take us there, God. Take us higher and higher. Oh, God, we'll be careful to give your name all the praise and glory in the name of Jesus. And we serve notice now in Jesus' name that the devil who ain't stopping nothing. We come against every principality. We take authority over every witchcraft spirit, every spirit of darkness. We come against every warlock, every spirit of divination. We come against every spirit of hatred and contention. We rebuke and bind it in Jesus' name. The blood is against you, Satan. Hallelujah. And we loose the power of joy. We loose the Holy Ghost. We loose victory. We loose salvation. We loose a fresh anointing. We loose sanctification, holiness. In the name of your son, Jesus Christ, Lord, we thank you now and we bless you. Continue to bless this service, oh God. We pray in the name of Jesus. Let your anointing move, oh God, from hand to hand, from mind to mind. Oh God, sit on us as you did on the day of Pentecost, oh God. Speak through us. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, have your way, Lord. We'll be careful to give your name the praise and glory today. Have your way. And we will worship you in spirit and truth. Have your way, God. For you, we love you because you first love us. Have your way, God. Use us. Use us, oh God, in the name of Jesus. We bless you now in Jesus' name. Come on now. Clap your hands and give God some praise. Come on and praise the Lord. Praise him in the sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. If you have breath, let everything that have breath give God some praise. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Praise God for, amen, our elder, Wallace being the ram in the bush this morning. We praise God for him. At this time, our scripture reading will be in Genesis chapter 29. Genesis chapter 29. Praise the Lord. Amen, amen, amen. I've heard, heard the words of that prayer. I really believe, I really believe, I really believe we ought to praise God with all of our hearts, our minds, our soul. Don't leave nothing on the table. That's what they say in sports. Don't leave nothing on the field. Don't leave nothing on the court. That means you give it your all. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And I believe that if we give God our all, that God will meet us in the sanctuary and we'll see the mighty power of God. Not the power of Barry, not the power of of uh, any of the elders or deacons or anybody else, just the power of the almighty God. Hallelujah. I long for him. I long for him. Genesis chapter 29, verses 21. I'm sorry, I, did I say 29? I did say 29, didn't I? It's supposed to be chapter 21. Amen. I like the fact that that man in the red suit is standing right in front of me to help me along the way. Praise God for that man in the red suit. Amen. <laughs> We're supposed to be in chapter 21. Amen. Back up just a few chapters, and we're going to start that at verse 9. That's where the 9 comes in at. All right. Genesis chapter 21, verses 9, and we'll read through verse 19. Praise the Lord. And if you have it, say amen. Praise God. Um, verse 9 reads as follows. And Sarah saw the son of Hagar, the Egyptian, which she had borne unto Abraham, mocking. Wherefore she said unto Abraham, Cast out this bondwoman and her son, 
For the son of this bondwoman shall not be heir with my son, even with Isaac. And the thing was very grievous in Abraham's sight because of his son. And God said unto Abraham, Let it not be grievous in thy sight because of the lad and because of thy bondwoman in all that Sarah hath said unto thee. Hearken unto her voice, for in Isaac shall thy seed be called. And also of the son of the bondwoman will I make a nation, because he is thy seed. And Abraham rose up early in the morning and took bread and a bottle of water and gave it unto Hagar, putting it on her shoulder and the child, and sent her away. And she departed and wandered in the wilderness of Beersheba. And the water was spent in the bottle, and she cast the child under one of the shrubs. And she went and set her down over against him a good way off, as it were, a bowshot. For she said, Let me not see the death of the child. And she sat over against him and lift up her voice and wept. And God heard the voice of the lad. And the angel of God called to Hagar out of heaven and said unto her, What aileth thee, Hagar? Fear not, for God hath heard the voice of the lad where he is. Arise, lift up the lad, and hold him in thine hand, for I will make him a great nation. And God opened her eyes, and she saw a well of water, and she went and filled the bottle with water and gave the lad drink. Amen, amen. What a mighty God we serve. Yes, sir. <laughs> Won't he do it? <laughs> yes, he will. Glory. I'm not going to preach it, but that's good. Amen. Thank God. That's good. Thank God for his deliverance. At this time, let us prepare ourselves for our morning offering. Praise the Lord. The Bible teaches us to give, and it shall be given you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, shall men give unto your bosom. But whatsoever measure that ye meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. Malachi 3 and 10 says, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. And prove me now, herewith saith the Lord of hosts, I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive. All God's people say amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, if you would, let us stand to our feet. And for those who are coming, face the uh, walls, the outer walls, and follow the directions of your usher as they lead us from the back to the front. Others who are giving, you see the options are push, pay, Venmo, and cash app. So you have different ways you can give your offering. I use those quite often, praise the Lord, to give out my offering to the, to the house of God. So we thank God for them. Yes, sir. Thank you. Father, we thank you, dear God, for this offering. We thank you for everyone that took from what you have given unto them and have put it in these baskets or have sent it, dear God, by these different methods. Thank you for every heart that gives willfully and cheerfully. Lord, for you, we know that you said you'd bless them, and we thank you for it, Lord. Now, Lord, bless this offering. Bless it to be used for the upbuilding of thy kingdom, O oh God, and to oppose the forces of darkness. We ask these things in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Praise Amen. the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. And as it has been said already in your hearing, that uh, we praise God certainly for our pastor and first lady and those who are traveling with them. 
Uh, we pray that God will continue to cover and keep each and every one of them. They made their way to New Jersey. And, of course, Pastor has so many other places to go and those who will be returning home. So we pray, Lord, cover them, keep them as they travel in Jesus' mighty name. But as I had a ram in the bush by my brother this morning, we certainly have a ram in the bush by with Elder Doster, who will be bringing us this morning's message. So after uh, the choir um, it gives our last song, then it will next voice you will be here will be that of the venerable Elder Darrell DeRocha Doster. <laughs> Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Oh, this is really hot, dear. <laughs> Every now and then, you know, I'm considered a contemporary, but I grew up in church. The only thing I really know is church. And every now and then, I like, we were in rehearsal yesterday, uh, and it's a privilege to be able to work with the men. They, uh, yeah, so we just have a good time in rehearsal. And, uh, I like some of the old songs. Uh, you know, we didn't have drums back when I was coming up. And uh, used to pat the foot like this. Who does for me like that? Yeah. Y'all remember those songs? They used to start like that. <laughs> Can we do an old school today? Is all right? Y'all sing with us today? So I said, I will trust. In the Lord, y'all yeah. know that's it. I will trust in, in the Lord. I wish I had somebody to know what I I'm talking about today. Trust Come on, hey. In the Lord, the Lord until, until I die. Anybody got that testimony today? Come on, say, said I will trust. Yeah. In the Lord, I will trust you. Yeah. In the Lord, said I will trust in the Lord yeah. until I die. See, I had to live long enough. See, I used to hear the old folks. Come on, pass your feet like y'all know what I'm talking about. I grew up hearing the old folks sing those songs. My grandmother gone on to be with the Lord now. My mother and father gone on to be with the Lord. But when they would sing those songs, they used to sing it with conviction. I went through a few things in my life. I could say, I will trust in the Lord. I wish I had a witness here today. I will trust. Anybody feel like that with me today? Say with me. Say, I will trust. Yes. In the Lord until I die. Until I die. I don't believe y'all today. Say, said I will trust. <laughs> in the Lord, my 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 my, my, my. I will trust. Yeah. <laughs> in the Lord, said I will trust. Until I die. Come on, Elder, sing it.
Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord, everyone. Hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord has made. We ought to rejoice. Hallelujah. For this day, hallelujah, that we didn't, we weren't promised to. Amen. God is good. He is that kind of God that we can praise him all the time. No matter if he doesn't even do anything for you, he's still that good. He still cares. Hallelujah. We give honor to the spirit of Christ this morning, to who's the head of our life, to our absent pastor, first lady whom we love. God may keep them in their travels and bless them, strengthen them as they go and do the things that God has for them to do. We bless you. We've given honor to my wife in our absence. Bless the house of God. We bless you, the elders, ministers, everybody in their respective places. For truly God has been good. I promise that I won't be with you long, but I do want to encourage your heart. This is the last month, last week of the women that we celebrate. And we thank God for women. Amen? Thank God. Whatever you had to deal with, we thank God for you. Hallelujah. Because truly, you are a blessing. So we're going to get right into this word. And like I said, we won't be with you long. But we want to talk to you just for a little while. And the word has already been read, but I'm going to read it again. Genesis 21 and 9. And Sarah saw Haggai, the Egyptian, which had born, saw Haggai's son, which had been born of Abraham, mocking, where she said to Abraham, cast out the barn woman and her son, and this barn woman shall not be the heir my son, even Isaac. And this thing was very grievous to Abraham because of his son. And God said unto them, let it not be grievous in your sight of the lad because of the bond woman all that Sarah has said unto thee, hearkening unto a voice, and Isaac shall be my seed be called. And also the son of the bond woman, I'll make a nation because he's your seed. And I'm going to stop there because you've heard all of the reading. And I want to talk to you for a few moments from the subject. Broken, but not unrepairable. Broken, but not unrepairable. In the background of this story, Sarah is told in the 18th chapter that she's going to have a son, and she laughs. God said, why'd you laugh? And she's thinking in her mind, at my age, I'm going to have a son. Why, God said, is there anything too hard for God? I don't care how old you are. I don't care whatever troubles you have. God can bring you out. God can make a way out of no way. In Genesis, it talks about, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was without form, and the darkness was upon the face of the deep. John talks about all things were made by him, and without him, anything was made. In other words, the term for that is ex nihilo. In other words, God can make something out of nothing. Whatever you think you don't have, whatever it looks like, it's not going to happen. We're talking about God. We're not talking about scientists. We're not talking about the mayor, the governor, anybody who can work with their hands. We're talking about God. When God says, I'm going to do something, that's a promise that's guaranteed. In other words, he said, I'll make a way in the wilderness rivers in a desert. Can you imagine water coming out of a desert, a dry desert? That's God. He can do that. That's the mindset that you got to have. Now we want to deal with this 
brokenness. First of all, Sarah had no business telling Abraham to go to Hagar. When God said, I'm going to give you a son, God does not need our help. The only help God needs is for us to tell somebody about how good he is. That's the only help he needs. And really, that's a command for what we should do. Didn't need to have him do that. Now she's upset because this older child is making fun of her child. That doesn't really get into what all of the mocking was. But whatever it is, got her upset saying you got to get out of here and take that boy with you. Now Abraham is broken because now he has to give up his son, the first son that he had, looking at him, seeing him. He looked like me, act like me, heard him with his first voice, saw his first steps. You got to go. That hurts. I don't care who you are when you deal it with the loss. Hallelujah. And back to Sarah dealing with this son, mocking her son. And you mothers know how you are. Somebody messed with your child. I don't care if they're right or wrong. You want to intervene. That's my child. I'm taking up for my child. That's how you mothers are. God made you like that. Now you got Hagar had to go out. And I don't understand why he only gave her just a small bottle of water. Now she's out in the desert. The water's run dry. Her son is now dehydrated, about to die. But God came in the midst, fixed the situation that you and I jacked up. Said Abraham, don't worry, your son is going to be the one that brings the tribes in. Hagar, your son is going to be all right too. God knows how to deal with brokenness. When it comes to people, sometimes we get in trouble. I understand women who had to make decisions in their life. Some guy woke up in the morning and said, I no longer love you. I'm walking out. I don't care about you and these kids. I'm going elsewhere. Somebody made a decision taking a woman by force. I'm going to rape her. She has to deal with that. Somebody made a decision. I'm going to take it out on this woman. I'm going to make her a punching bag. But sometimes you see that God deals with these people and God's always going to rescue you when you put your trust in him. Sometimes women have a baby and they say, I no longer want this kid. Leave him in the hospital. Put him on a doorstep. Get rid of him. Now the child grows up in foster care. But God can still bless you. God can still take that broken child and fix his situation. There are many people that grew up in foster care. That saved, filled with the Holy Ghost. There's many kids that have been raped and abused but it's filled with the Holy Ghost. Why? Because God knows how to take care of you. He knows how to fix that brokenness. Hallelujah. Many kids were given up for adoption. Hallelujah. But brokenness is God's specialty. Whenever you have a problem, God wants you to look to him, not to the situation, but give it to him. Somebody needs to tell somebody this poor man cried, but God delivered him out of all their troubles. We need to tell somebody when my mother and father forsake me, the Lord will take me up. When the enemy rushes in like a flood, the Lord will step up a standard. We need to 
tell somebody. God is looking for us to talk to some people before they get to the point of doing damage. I know that you might be broken. I know you're hurting because of this situation, but we can tell them we have a God that look that's high and he looks low. He knows how to intervene. He's looking for you and I to witness to someone before they go off the deep end. We're hearing about so many tragedies, so many murders because of the brokenness of people. But it is our responsibility to talk to people. It's our responsibility to bless folk with the word. It's our responsibility to step out of our comfort zone and tell somebody he's good. Tell somebody, yes, I was broken, but God heal me. God intervene. Hallelujah. I told you I wasn't going to be long with you, but I'm not finished yet. Hallelujah. But I want to be transparent this morning. I want, as I give you these two testimonies about these two jacked up people, I want you to look at it from the perspective of how God can take brokenness and bless. That's what I want you to look at when you hear these testimonies. And I want you to look at what God does in the midst of brokenness. I want you to see God. So when you talk to somebody, even in your situation, look at God intervening in brokenness. I said the title is broken, but you're not unrepairable. So when I talk about these two people, get that picture in your mind of what God can do. And I'm a star. And I'm, I, people probably say, I can't believe he's saying what he's saying. But listen from that perspective. My mother was born in Marshville, North Carolina. And that's when she got about 16, 17. She moved to the big city of Monroe. And there she met her husband, much older than her, 10 years or so, that I can remember her talking about. And she had three kids by this individual. He used to drink, he abused her, and it got to the point where she said, enough is enough. And she walked out. Now, I dealt with her later talking about some things. I said, but how could you leave three kids? Why didn't you take the kids with you? But that was a whole situation. We're talking about an individual that's broken. Then she goes to New York City, meet a man somewhere in Glenwood, uh, Long Island. I'm not sure my brother, he knows. And she meets a man. And she has a child by him. When the child is about four or five years old, her best friend or the friend she had, she says, here, take my child. You can have her. Mm. I said, okay, we're talking about somebody that's broken, that's got issues. Then the, the, the brother that was left with this woman, when he was about 20-something, she was going to tell him who his real mother was. But her husband hit her in the head with a hammer and killed her. So for a time, he didn't know who his mother was. He kind of remembered a lady, but he wasn't sure who she was. Then she came back to Monroe, North Carolina, met up with this brother by the name of James Reed, my father. He had broken up with his wife, so they got together, but then they wind up breaking up. He goes back. Now, when he breaks up with his wife, she has no kids, but when he gets back there, she's got three kids. 
I said, you're a better man than me. But that's the foolishness of my thinking from back in the day. Then she stays here for about seven months, then goes back to New York. That's why I tell people I was prepared in North Carolina, but I was born in New York. Then she continues on and meets another brother. Now she has another child, but this child now has cerebral palsy, couldn't talk, paralyzed on the right side. She's dealing with a whole lot of emotional baggage. She's got sickness problems. She was telling me that her sisters and them work roots on her. She was her body was deteriorated, but she's trying to hang on, taking care of me and my brother that has cerebral palsy. And she's doing her thing, dropping us off from weekend to weekend, partying, doing her thing. Now, she wasn't a drinker or a smoker, but she had other issues. You understand what I'm saying? Back and forth, back and forth. But thanks be to God. She had two cousins that were saved and filled with the Holy Ghost. They said, cousin, we know that you're dealing with a whole lot of stuff. But let me introduce you to a man named Jesus. Let me tell you about somebody who can answer your situation. Now, when they brought the Bible to her, I don't know what was the first scripture that they read. They might have read Genesis when it talks about Eve taking the fruit and giving it to her husband. They might have talked about Dinah who strayed away from the area being disappointed um, and being disobedient and was raped by Hamar. They might have told her about Abigail who decided that David is about to mess up something. Let me go ahead and bring some fruits, some cakes and raisins because this man is about to destroy the place. She might have told them about Queen Vesta who decided I'm not parading my naked self amongst your friends. They might have told her about Job. They might have said when Job was going through his thing, his wife said, why don't you cuss God and die? And Job said, thou speakest as one of a foolish woman. In other words, I'm not going to do that. I'm keeping my integrity through all. They might have told her about Hosea when he said, plead with your mother plead with she she's not my wife neither am I a husband therefore put away your whoredom out of her sight her adulteress and between her breasts lest I strip her naked as the day she was born and make her in the wilderness instead of like a dry land to slay for thirst they might have told her about the woman with the issue of blood that had to deal with it for 12 wrong years, but she said, if I could just touch the hem of his garment, I know I'll be made whole. They might have told her about the woman in Samaria who's read Jesus, and he asked her, where's your husband? And she said, I had none. Yeah, he had five, but the one you with is not yours. They might have told her, a Roman, what shall we say to these things? Shall we continue in sin? Hallelujah. They might have told her that the spirit of the Lord has anointed me to preach, to teach the gospel that he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted and deliver the captives, recover the sight and set liberty to them that are bruised. They might have told her, I therefore there's no condemnation that they that are in Christ Jesus have God before you. Who can be against you? But at some point, they told her about Acts. You need to repent 
and be baptized in the name of Jesus. And that she did. Now, I remember she her tarrying for the Holy Ghost. I was about seven years old, sitting in the back of the church, and there up in the front, and you know how tarrying service go. I don't remember all of the verbiage, but if I can remember from what I've heard when I was in church, they probably were saying, come on baby, call on Jesus. If you die now, you ain't got to die later. Call Jesus. Come on, let him bless you. Let him feel you darling. And they're up there tarrying with this woman and then the Lord blessed her and filled her with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Gave her what she needed. She's no longer the same what she used to be. She was broken, but God saved her. God stepped in, said no more. Today, the buck stops here. You're my child. I'm going to make sure that you have what you need. Hallelujah, did what she had to do. As the story goes on, I'm about seven years old, and because of her sickness, and maybe because I didn't have the proper money, she couldn't let us go to the church or the Pentecostal church that she grew up in, well, not so much grew up in, but that she used to go. So there was a church in the neighborhood, a Baptist church, and so I would go there from Sunday to Sunday. So I have a slight Baptist background. You know, in the Baptist church, you know, when the choir come in, take them 20 minutes to march in on a song they're going to sing for about two minutes. Dun, dun, dun. So I got to deal with that. But that's okay. Hallelujah. Then... I started noticing the change in my mother. I ain't know about nobody being saved. So we used to have a record player, and we used to play 78s. Now, some of you young people don't know about those 78s. They had 33s, 45s, and then the middle one was the 78s. And she had just one record, and I should love this record at seven years old. The woman used to say, Every time you kiss me, give me fever. I used to love that record. Seven years old. The record got missing. Where's the record? She put it away. Got rid of it. I noticed that no, we no more taking us to babysitters on the weekend. Now we're at home. Don't understand, I'm just seven years old. I'm noticing. I said, where's those fine rags, I call them rags, that you used to wear? Girlfriend could dress. She would have these chiffon clothes, and silk stockings, bad shoes. Now I get to understand why I love shoes so much. Because of her, girlfriend was dressed, but now her outfits are changing. I'm asking her, I said, Ma, what's the, why we don't go? To parties, well, not me, but why she don't go to parties anymore? I didn't ask about the men coming in. I didn't want to get smacked in the mouth because in those days you get hit in the mouth. So I asked her, and she told me, she said, because I'm saved. I don't do those things no more. Seven years old. I don't know what she's talking about, saved. Then, about 10 years old, went to the Baptist church. They had a young people service. Every, a bunch of young kids are jumping in a line. They want to get baptized. So I'm trying to impress my mama. I said, Mom, I don't want to get baptized. She grabbed my hand. No, you're not. I thought I was doing something. She said, when you get baptized, you're going to get baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. At 10 years old, I said, oh, whatever. I don't know what you're talking about. Hallelujah. So now, I got to deal with this, but I'm growing up, hallelujah, growing up, starting to smell myself, starting to feel myself, yeah, doing what I want to do in New York City, what young bucks do that's 
not saved. Used to come in a house on Saturday, or actually it was Sunday morning, about 5, 30, 6 o'clock. Get in the bed. About 9, 9.30, she come knocking on the door. We're going to church this morning. I said, what? I just got in. You got to be kidding me. Ain't nobody going to church. Then she said, well, I tell you what. You don't want to go to church? Pack your bags and get out. Pack your bags and get out. I don't have to tell you where was I at. In church. This is going on. I'm tired. Don't want to be in church. But the word's in there. It's in there even though I don't realize what's going on. Now, when I get old enough, I'm out of the house. You ain't got to tell me we're going to church. I ain't going nowhere. I'm going to do what I want to do because I'm big and bad. I refuse to go to church. All right. But that stuff was really on the inside. I used to be partying, doing my thing on the dance floor. I didn't dance, but I felt like a fish out of water. Every time I went somewhere, it, it, it just didn't feel right. It just, I couldn't enjoy myself. I was, I, I'm going to try to be cool how I'm going to say this. I was with this girl, and, and, and the lights went out in uh, 1977. And she's like, you scared of the dark? And I said, she don't understand. I'm scared of the eternal darkness. I thought the rapture about it took place until I heard the news. They said it was a blackout. I said, Lord, I thank you. <laughs> it's a blackout. But that didn't stop. I kept going on because that was just for the moment until they got in there. Kept doing my thing. Hallelujah. Then, I'm talking about transparency now. She giving away kids. I'm trying to have babies. Wound up with three girls that had three abortions. I couldn't buy a baby. So what's going on here? Couldn't have kids. Okay, I had to deal with that. Now I'm out of the house. She calls my house on New Year's Eve. Talking about I want to go to watch night service. I said, you kidding me? Watch night? I'm about to have a party in my house. I invited a couple of Russian fellas, smearing off a hundred and smearing off ninety. These two brothers was coming to the house, and me and Rick James, we understood Mary Jane was coming too. Then there was a Puerto Rican fella named Bacardi. He was coming to the party too. This woman talking about go to watch night service. I got all this stuff in the house. You got to be kidding me. Ain't nobody going to watch that. But I went. The word got in me. I'm the original. I went to a meeting one night. My heart wasn't right because I was thinking about home. I was thinking about the stuff that I was about to get into. But now I'm in here listening to the word of God. And it pricked my heart. And not after that, not too long after that, I got saved, filled with the Holy Ghost. God, hallelujah. This broken brother, I had a lot of issues. Charles, from the age of probably 18 to maybe 24, had well over 60, 65 jobs. I didn't care about nothing. I was busted in my mind. Hated women. Didn't like what was going on. I had a bad male chauvinist attitude. But God cleaned my mind, changed my attitude, straightened my stinking thinking. Now, but before I meant to say this, but before I got to that point, this woman that was broken, she's now on her knees praying, Lord, save my son. He's out there doing all kinds of foolishness. I once was him. You saved me. You cleaned me up. Save my child. Keep him. Let him know that he needs you. And as I said, I got saved. What she understood was that God blessed two people that was broken. 
broken. I still had some issues. But she got to see the son saved. Before she passed, she saw me being a deacon for at least six of the ten years that I was a deacon. She didn't know that I was going to be called to the ministry, but she said something one time, and I looked at her, yeah, okay. But she knew something. But God blessed her child. Then, in 96, when I got called to the ministry, the church that we belonged to had a building fund, and had a building, a, a building demolition, and they tore down the building that we was in. So we was about two blocks away at our sister church, and that's where I did my trial sermon. But what the good part about that is, the seven-year-old that was at the back of that church watching his mother tarry for the Holy Ghost. Now he's in the front of the church giving the word of God. God got a good sense of humor. You sit and watching her. Don't know what's going on. But I'm going to bless you to be up front to tell people they need to be saved. They need the Holy Ghost. They need to be delivered. Hallelujah. God is good. Hallelujah. I'm almost finished. Now, this male chauvinist, bad attitude, but the Holy Ghost changed the individual that you see before you. When I was in New York, I had a mentality. If you got kids and you're dealing with me, don't you dealing yet. You got kids, I don't care how fine you are, I don't care what it looked like me and you could do together, tell your story walking. I had a friend of mine, I used to say, Junior, what's my saying? He said, they ain't mine, I ain't buying. That was my story. That's what I meant. I ain't play. You got kids, get, get, get step back. Can't deal with you. But look at God. Came to Charlotte, North Carolina. Hooked up with a woman, two kids. Two kids, girl, boy, first, we're going to deal with the girl. Her being younger had some issues with some prior situations and kind of act up a little bit. Mm -hmm, got you. But I said, I know how to deal with this. I'm going to show you loving kindness. I refuse to barf at you. I refuse to get upset with you. I know what you're dealing with. God has changed my thinking, my stinking thinking. I'm going to show you the love of God. I'm going to show you how good God is. And now our relationship is great. But right before that, I took Tevin and Kisa. I took them out to eat. And I said, let me feed you. And I said, I want to tell you something. Just in case you don't know, I'm not your daddy. Now, before y'all start tripping, what I meant by that was, not that I'm not going to be a good daddy to you, but if I tell you to do something in the house and I need something done, I don't want to hear you ain't my daddy. So I took him out to, do, to let him start with that premise. I'm not your daddy, okay? But when I say do what you do, you do it. Then, like I said, our relationship grew. Now it's all, oh, daddy, what's up? Call just to see how you're doing. Do you want to go to lunch? Do you want to go to dinner? She'll be on the phone with her girlfriend. My dad just got in the car. I'll talk with you later. My dad this. My dad that. My dad. God can't take a broken situation. You're not unrepairable. God can fix any situation. Hallelujah. Damn. We got the brother. Young Tevin, hallelujah, being a man, dealt with some changes with him, but he got it together. And I took him down, I woke him up one morning. I said, come downstairs. 
I said, we're going to cook breakfast for your mama and your sister because I want to teach you how a man should treat a woman. I want to teach you that you should be able to cook for your woman, your wife, whatever, so that she understands you're not the average man. See, her mom, she already knew it. She had all that and two bags of chips. But I wanted him to recognize. See, I didn't have a, I didn't grow up with a father, but I understood if I had a father, what I would want him to be like. And I also had the Holy Ghost teaching me how to be the person that I should be according to God. So when I taught him the best that I could, every day when I talked to him, whatever, dad, this, how you doing, dad? I just called, how's your knees, dad? How's this, dad? How's that, dad? Dad, 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 dad. I thought I told these kids I would be dad. Dad, dad. When God fixes something that's un that's broken, it can be repaired when He steps in, when He gives His anointing on a situation. God is good. Hallelujah. It's, you got to understand. God knows how to fix a situation. So what I'm telling you that those who might be broken, those that might be in a situation, just keep living. Just keep trusting God. You are not unrepairable. When you have God, he can fix your situation. People will be calling you dad that you told them you ain't they dad. But the contest changed when you showed them loving kindness. Hallelujah. A couple of weeks ago, I thought about it. I said, man, Kevin, I, I, I'm grateful. Our Lord has blessed you. You're working hard, doing what you got to do. He said, dad, I only followed your example of worth ethics. The man who had 85 jobs. But what he did see, while I was with them, I had one job. I went to work when I didn't feel like it. I did what I had to do. God knows how to bless. Hallelujah. God is good. God is good. You're not unrepairable. No matter what you're going through, look at it. God, when he brings you out, when he changes your mind, he don't halfway do nothing. He does everything completely. Look at you sitting in this house. You probably at one time was broken. Your situation might not have been mine, but look at God. Hallelujah, how he blessed you. And in my closing, I want to pull this point. Will you hear me say, well, if I do something and I bless the house, I bless you. And you say, thank you, Ella Dostra. And I say to you, it's my reasonable service. That comes from years of being blessed by God. That comes from remembering. My mother told me when I was first born, they thought I was going to die. I was in an incubator for 21 days. But God spared me. I remember when I was two years old, I had to have an operation for some stuff. I remember my mother going from house to house because of her situation. I remember kids in my elementary school dying. A, a couple of kids got burned up in a fire in Jamaica, Queens, two blocks from where we live. It could have been me. I remember in junior high school in the late 60s when heroin was starting to creep up hard and kids 14, 13, 15 was dying, skin popping a heroin. But you brought me through. I remember high school, how you allowed me to get in high school dealing bad grades at all because I had no clue that I had a learning disability. But God, when he changes things, he fixes things. He does what he does. Going through school, acting out because I had problems. But God helped me.
get through, didn't understand all that was going through. Found out that I had dyslexia when I just about graduated from my, with my bachelor. Then God bless me to continue on, get my master. I used to ask my wife, could you help me with this? And she would get mad at me. I don't know what you're writing. I don't understand what you said. Answer the question. She got to be so bad that I learned how to answer all those questions. I got a, I think I had about a 3.8 leaving, get my master's degree. God, dyslexic and all. If I write a sentence right now, I'm going to leave out two or three words. But God, the teacher that I had when I left Lee University, God got on my nerves bad. Matter of fact, I, I said in the paper, he said, don't even send no paper back to me until you do it correct. I'm tired of you. Oof. He, buddy, when I graduated, he recommended South University. Said that's a good school, and I think they'll work with you. They'll be, they'll work with you what you need. Okay. Got in the school, somewhere about the third class. I see this name, Joshua Rice. I said, now, wait a minute. I know a lot of people with the same name. Can't be him. Look, and he did his profile. He was a teacher at South University. I said, oh, nice, I am. Read a little further. Used to be a teacher. Lee University. Lord have mercy. But because he got on me so bad, when I was in his class, when we used to do threads, I used to see him rip other people's threads or shed. But down, A, boom, good, good job, good job. A in the class. Why? Because I struggle with him. But he blessed me. So all of the things that I did in New York, police, Interactions with police, dealing, shots, this, that, going on. But God brought me through. I'm going to tell you this last crazy little story. Me, me and my friends, we had this problem. See, back in the days, they didn't have credit cards, debit cards. People had cash in their pocket. And we felt, if you was Caucasian, it was our responsibility to relieve you that pressure, all that money in your pocket. And so we had a little larceny in our heart. So this one day we ripped these people off, and the police caught up with us. Now, I don't know whether I was high or sober. The police came and said, look, give me your name and your address. And I don't know how this came out of my mouth. I said, I'm not giving you my name nor my address because my mother is saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, and I can't have the police come into a house talking about her son is out here robbing people. The dude that I was with, he looked at me, is this Negro crazy? The police looked at each other, did he say that? What is that? And then the police said, y'all take this money and get out of here. I don't know why I said that, but Lord, I thank you. She was saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, got me out of trouble. I don't know where that come from. So, all of the stuff, all of the heartache, so all these years behind me. So when I say it's my reasonable service coming from uh, Romans, the first 12 chapter, first verse. It's not just something that I'm saying. I'm looking at how God brought me through. So anything that I can do in the house of God, I'm doing it with my reasonable service because when I look over my life, what God has done for me, when I look over my life, I could have been dead. When I look over my life, I could have been locked up with that arson in my heart. When I look over my life, I can give God praise. Whatever you want me to do, Lord, this dyslectic person, I'll still go to school, learn what I need to learn so that I can tell somebody about the love of God. I can rightly divide the word. Can't God do my lessons, but I get them done anyway. And God hovers over me, blesses me. My college um, in my doctoral degree right now, my grade average is 3.6. When I was in high school, I barely got out of high school. Graduated with a 64.5. In other words, I just got out of there. Crawl out of high school. 
but God, when he gets into the program, when he touches you, when he delivers you, I don't care what they say about you, whether you can read, barely used to be able to spell Derosha, hallelujah, but God, but God, hallelujah, broken, but you're not unrepairable. Stand on your feet this morning. I want you to give God a praise. Not because or just being because, but because you might have been broken, but he brought you out. Give God some praise. Hallelujah. For what he's done in your life. You didn't have to be here, but God, give him a praise for your pastor who was broken at one time, but God blessed him, healed his life, gave him a good wife. Give God some praise. This is why we here. Let the Lord know 4920 has Boulevard. We praising you this morning because we were broken. Hallelujah. But we weren't unrepairable. Hallelujah. We love you, Lord. Hallelujah. So what I want you to do, take this in mind. Whatever you're going through, realize God can change your situation. Even if you made a bad decision, and Lord knows I made some bad decisions, but God, but God, I'm going to bless you. Hallelujah. Anybody in this house need to go down in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We'll bless you. We'll take you down in the name of Jesus. And our God will fill you with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. God is good. Hallelujah. I had another message that I wanted to preach. And I, I, I was struggling with it. Couldn't understand. I said, Lord, I'm, try, I'm, I'm trying to get this. I, you gave me this message. I'm trying to get it. Couldn't get it. I'm in the pool the other day, walking around trying to do my exercise to help my knees. And this Caucasian lady swam up, swam up to me and said, sir, you look like you're trying to put a message together. I said, where'd she get that from? And then so she asked me, you a preacher? I said, yeah, I'm a preacher. I said, Sunday's my day to preach. So she said, what's the title of the message? I gave her the title. And then I uh, get, um, gave, gave the scriptures, gave her the title, broke it down. Actually, Jesus said, this is why this title goes with that, and this is what I'm doing. What I didn't realize, that was for her. That message was for her. God said, this is what I want you to talk about today. I want you to talk about this today. I'm thinking I got it going on. Okay, and it was pretty fairly good message. Yeah, bring it right on in. I said, not today. You're doing this. That was for that woman. Because, I mean, she tripped me out. When she walked, I mean, swam up to me and said, you look like you're preparing for a message. I was like, Lord, I, I understand what Apostle Paul said when he wrote this book. You can't make this stuff up. <laughs> you can't make it up. But keep looking up. God bless you. Anyone need prayer? Ask the elder to come and pray. I've done pretty good on the quota with these knees. But God is good. God is good. Hallelujah. It ain't always going to be like this. Hallelujah. I'm losing weight. Lost about 10 pounds. I got about 40 more to go. When I get 49, I'm just like, hey, uh, take this knee out of here. Let's get, let's get it going. But God is good. I thank him. God is good. No matter what your situation, no matter how broke and you may feel. Hallelujah. And son, I also want to say this. It's not that I was put my mom's on blast, but I wanted you to understand that God took somebody who was dealing with something. And then he blessed her son. Didn't stop with her. Blessed her son. Oh, and the brother that got left in New York, he's a preacher too. Amen. He's a preacher. In New York, they call him the master DJ. 
The man's got about, I collect books, he collects records. He got about 3,000 albums, maybe 2,000 CDs. When I used to go to his house, I made sure I go in there with a, a, the tape. I'm leaving out here with some good music. All that music. But God didn't know who his mother was. Finally, later on, he found out. But that didn't stop God's plan. He's a preacher. Preaching the word. God is good. It don't matter your situation or how it turned out. God can fix it. So if you need prayer, you need to go down in Jesus' name. We're here. Hallelujah. We have the elders that will pray for you in Jesus' name. And if you want to join this house, if you want to join this blessed house of God where the word of God is preached in his fullness, hallelujah, you can come too. There's a storm out on the ocean and it's moving this away. If your soul's not anchored in Jesus, you will surely drift away. Oh, there's a storm out on the ocean and it's moving this away. If your soul's not Anchor in Jesus, you will surely drift away. There's a storm out on the ocean, and it's moving this away. If your soul's not anchored in Jesus, you will surely drift away. Drift away, drift away. Surely drift away if your soul not anchor in Jesus, you will surely drift away, drift away, Lord, drift away, Lord, you will surely drift away if your soul not.
drift away, Lord. You will surely drift away if your soul not. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on and give God the praise. Hallelujah. Come on and give God the glory. Give him the honor. Magnify the Lord with me. And let us rejoice and be glad. Amen. We want to give God the praise and we thank God for blessing us. Amen. With a powerful message, broken but not undeliverable, unrepairable. Broken but not unrepairable. How many of you know God can repair anything? How many of you know God can fix anything? Amen. So we truly thank the we thank God for our pe, um, Elder Dosser and for allowing God to use him. Amen. Praise the Lord and Amen. Indeed, we need to continue to pray uh, for our um, brothers and sisters in Christ. Amen. So God is using us, and we thank God for the message and for the word, hallelujah, and for the powerful testimonies, amen, that he shared. Come on and give God the praise. Amen. Very transparent, amen, very open, and that's the way we, amen, can be with each other. Hallelujah. I know I, I'm from a big family, six brothers and three sisters, amen. Sometimes it's good to have people that are close to you that you can be transparent and open to. And when you come into the house of the Lord, we are all brothers and sisters in Christ. Amen. And we share our testimonies and experience and watch how God delivers and set free. And I look at this man of God preaching the word of God after all that he's been through. Amen. So we give God the praise for that. And we're not going to be long here. We're going to stand to our feet as we prepare, amen, to be dismissed in Jesus' name. And I would be remiss if I didn't ask if there's anybody uh, that would like to, amen, join the Living Church family. If you want to make this church your home, amen, and praise the Lord with us continually. You've been visiting, and even those that are in the listening audience, if you have enjoyed the services over the weeks and months, and, and you are glad about what you are hearing, you love our pastor, you love Pastor Parson, you love the elders, the brothers and sisters, and you want to make this your home, amen, feel free to come, 4920, amen, East W.T. Harris Boulevard, and make this your home, church in Jesus' name. Can you say amen? And we are here to welcome you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Every, every mind gets clear, every heart is, amen. Let's give God the praise for these brothers that are here today. Come on, give God the praise for these brothers and sisters. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace. Father, we love you today and we bless you, Lord. We thank you for all that you have done. We thank you for the word that have come forth with power, with conviction, with an anointing. The anointed is upon your servant, Elder Dawson. I pray that you would continue to bless his ministry, bless his family. Hallelujah, as you continue to bless us through, hallelujah, the preach message, oh God, that have been delivered today. And help us to remember, God, that many of our situations and circumstances may have some brokenness to it, but it is not unrepairable, God, because you're able to repair the breach. You're able to repair anything, God. You're able, hallelujah, because of your stripes that you bore on your body, you can touch the feelings of our infirmity. You know everything that we are going through. And we thank you, Lord, for having been reminded of that today. In the name of your son, Jesus Christ, we bless you now and we thank you. Now the God of peace, who again brought our Lord Jesus Christ from the dead, that great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant. Lord, make us perfect 
to do your will. Work that which is in us well, pleasing in your sight. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>